All alterations of the panels, texts, and images is to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by the companies that have produced them. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we will be reviewing, or going over, Iron Man Noir. Our story begins with Tony Stark and, a, and his crew of adventurers going through a Mayan jungle to try and find the Jade Mask. This story starts off with four the point of view of a journalist named Virgil. The others in the crew are Rhodey, or James Rhodes, and Dr. Galita Nerf Nefera. Now, as they're wandering through the jungle, they finally find what they're looking for, which is an entrance to a underground temple. Tony Stark smears some of his own blood on the statue, which then opens up a door that that fall that has them fall into an underground um, cave filled with water. Tony decides to go underwater. While underwater, he fights a snake, kills the snake, and continues to swim. When he gets out on the other side, he's at a temple. The other side is to follow through. Tony tries on the jade mask at the top of the temple. It doesn't seem to work. But then, his assistant, Chia, point, points a gun at him. But then, Rhodey comes up from behind with a gun as well, aimed at her. We then are introduced to the villains of the story, Dr. Henrich Zemo and Commander Baron Strucker. Tony then sets the temple on fire, leaving his girlfriend slash assistant, Gia, on top of the temple to burn. He then jumps with James Rhodey, and they jump to some nearby, nearby vines. Strucker then tries to shoot them along with the other Nazis. It almost causes a cave-in. But then Tony throws his own, or puts up some dynamite, lights it, and it explodes, launching them upwards into water. They end up in the ocean, are saved by two women. We then see that Tony Stark in this universe has already taken on the ghost, Modok, what looks to be Devil Dinosaur, Fing Fing Foom, and has probably found the one of the Infinity Gems, or Infinity Stones. We then see Tony in his office, this being interviewed by a bunch of journalists. He then pull out for an appointment with what he thinks to be a new assistant. Turns out this person is uh, Potts, seeking out the seeking to be a journalist because Virgil died. <gasps> we then transfer over to Stark Labs, where Rhodey and, uh, and Tony Stark are stuck up by someone in an Iron Man suit. This turns out to be Jarvis. Jarvis then takes off the suit, playing because he was playing a prank on them, obviously. He then charges Tony's heart up, which is part of a repulsor, as, he call, as they call it, which is basically an engine just attached to his heart to help beat. Later that, later that day, we see Tony Stark or get it, at, his, at his home. He decides to go through Gia's things and finds a map to Atlantis. In the second issue, it starts off with Tony Pepper on a boat. They're talking about how... They're talking about the boat that they are on and how they got there. By jet propulsion on a plane. We then see that the name of this boat is Dorma. Lady Dorma. The captain is named Namor. For those of you who don't know, Namor is the Submariner in... Main 616 continuity, but in this he is not. We then see they're then called into the office of Namor or the captain's deck, where Rhodey is there as well. He's helping Namor read the the uh, diagnostics for the ship. They then said that they are getting really close. We then see why Tony wanted to go on this expedition, which is so he can find a special type of metal called or. Or Cullium, or Culcum, or Chulcum. The Metal of the Gods, which is a kind of a power enhancer or amplifier, as they say in the book. They then send to their quarters for the night. In the morning, they lower a submarine because they're almost right over where they need to be. It is a special type of submarine that Stark made for deep sea diving or deep sea exploration. It can resist over. Just about six tons of pressure it is named the Happy Hogan. As they go deeper and deeper, they find themselves by rock ridges where they see a glowing light where there is. And they keep. And as they go on, they find the city of Atlantis. They decide to go into a tiny hole that they find and in a bunch of the wreckage. That hole leads to a tiny air pocket where there is a giant statue of the sea, of the god of the sea, Poseidon and his trident. 
This trident has the special metal that they are looking for. Tony and Namor pull the trident from the statue, and they get back inside the submarine. When they get back on the ship, they are put into a stick-up by Baron Zemo and Strucker. The, the trident is then taken. It is then revealed that Gia survived the fire. Tony then activates a smoke bomb on the ship. Pippin tries to steal the trident, but he is hit with the blunt end of the, of the trident. Pepper Potts is then kidnapped by Iberon Zemo and his crew. We then see the ship that Namor, Tony, Rhodey, and the rest of the crew are on. Something I didn't mention is that Namor in this is not the Submariner. He is just a fisher who cut his ears into a elven shape. So did the rest of his crew. And the third issue is shown that they are survive that they did survive by getting into a ship that Namor had, well, a submarine that Namor had, and escaping right before the torpedo landed. Tony then passed out. We then go into a flashback where Tony is playing with an action figure named the Mandarin, which is a reference to. Well, the Mandarin, which is a Iron Man villain. We then see Tony's dad panicking, and then coming back to normal, which is assumed to be like a PTSD kind of thing that he has. We then see that he made a blueprint for a robot that is called the Arsenal. Tony then wakes up to Jarvis waking him up by charging his heart back up. We then see Tony talking to, to Rhodey. And because this is, takes place during the 1930s, black people still don't have the rights that they have today. With that said, Ed, Rhodey asked to be asked if he could speak freely about what, what he thinks of Tony, because Tony asked him. He then goes on saying how he thinks he's that how 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 irresponsible Tony could be, and how he's been looking for a transfer to a military job, and how he still he enjoyed it for going on the adventures with Tony at first, but now he doesn't because well, all of how dangerous everything is. We then see Tony want to use the Iron Man armor with Jarvis calling him insane. Because of how weak Tony's heart is, he thinks that Tony would basically die. But Tony convinces him. And see, Jarvis was able to track down the submarine to an island with a castle on it. We then see a, another Iron Man armor, a much smaller kind, which is called the JRXL-1000. We then see Tony have Jarvis charge him up to 200, 125%. We then see... Jar we see the Iron Man and the War Machine fly down from the blimp that they were on. See them crash down onto the castle, break a hole in the wall, fight Nazis, in a scene that is very reminiscent of the Iron Man 2. We then see them break down a wall, or we see a wall get broken down by a robot, and we see um, Pepper Potts being tortured by Baron Zemo. We then see that the robot is the Arsenal, which is the robot that Tony's dad Mark, designed. He proceeds to get a beat down by the robot. Then Zemo removes his mask to reveal that it is Tony's dad brainwashed. In the third issue, it continues where we left off, where Tony gets a total beat down by the robot. Then shows a flashback of how this happened. Well, this is Baron Strecker who tells it. We learn that Zemo isn't even a real person. It is a code name for a serum made of acronium. Wait, no. It's an acronym for zolpidium, ethanol, methochloride, and ophtonial. Ophtonial. We then see that it is injected through the eye so it gets to the brain. We then see Iron Man take a good hit at the robot, knocking it down. We then see him rescue Pepper Potts, and then we see Gia take a swing at the armor with an axe, then Pepper punches her, knocking her out. They then break through another wall, then Tony turns into a motorcycle, which is one of the coolest and silliest things I've ever seen in a comic. They escape and make it to their blimp, and with only 
10%. He lies to Jarvis about having 18% power and rockets off to go back and get the trident. He flies up into another blimp, punches his Strucker in the face through glass, fights more Nazis, then gets beaten by a bunch of Arsenal robots. He then takes the trident and uses it to blow up all of the Nazi air blimps. He then falls into the ocean is saved by Namor. A week later, we see that he is in the Stark M Hospital, being interviewed by some reporters. Jarvis clears the room so that he can talk to Pepper Potts, Hudson Rhodey. We then see that Pepper Potts published her, her um, story off of her own name and not a fake name, like they would do back in the 1930s. The story was called Marvels, a magazine of men adventures, the new adventures of Tony Stark. And in the end of this book, there is no concept art like the Spider-Man Noir book, books, but that is 